Thank you. Okay. Uh, here we have our peak oil forecast. This was done, Walter Youngquist and I did this in 1999. We actually did it in 1998. I want you to note only, uh, only the red curve here. This is world oil production. It's data from 1960 to uh, 1996, and then the forecast is down here. Okay? Uh, first of all, I want you to be amazed that Back then, world oil forecast in 1960 was only about uh, 8 billion barrels, and by 1970 it has grown to 18 billion barrels, over 100% increase in 10 years. That's what we've been used to, that's what we want, and that's what we'll never get. Uh, there are two sharp peaks here, one, and we'll talk about those in, in a minute, but I want to focus on this peak from here to here. This is exactly what Walter Youngquist and I forecast uh, nearly 10 years ago. These peaks, uh, you have a positive first derivative and the negative first derivative. Here you have very smooth changes. Okay, uh, Walter Youngquist does all of the petroleum geology and I do all the math and modeling. We work together very well and I'm uh, so proud to have him as a colleague now for uh, more than 11 years. Now, uh, uh, transparency number two, we have peak, uh, peak oil in 2006. This is the data. This is all data. There is no forecasting here whatsoever. Uh, you have correlation is not causality, but without correlation there is no causality. So I'll just mention a correlation here. Uh, you have here the Yom Kippur War, you have here the Arab oil embargo, here you have, here you have the uh, uh, disposition of the uh, Shah of Iran, and then you have the uh, Iraq-Iran War for eight years. Uh, here you have the Asian economic meltdown, uh, and here you have the dot-com uh, bu bu bubble burst in the United States. Okay, and note how different this peak is. Now we're, we're going up like this. And I have some numbers here. Uh, we have growth in 2003 was, in 2004 were both about 4% 4, 4 per year. And then the, the growth dropped down to 1.1% per year in 2005 and down to 0.2% in 2006. And now the first six months of uh, 2007, it's gone down at 0.4%. And Walter Youngquist says we're now in depletion dominates. It dominates everything, Techno technological change. It dominates uh, investment uh, capital. It dominates everything. Okay, now, uh, from a mathematical standpoint, I hope I've explained that mathematically it's also quite different from the pre previous uh, tempor temporary maxima. Next, next slide, please. Uh, here we have the Olduvai theory. This indicator is world total oil production over world total population. Population is half of the, what we call the Ackerman's in indicator. Ackerman was a very close friend, colleague of uh, M. King Hubbard. And uh, uh, you see that this indicator is very accurate for the uh, Great Depression, the end of, end of World War II and the growth up here. Now, it, it, hit a, it hit a peak in 1979 and it's been going like this. Well, you can't test your own theory, theory against your old, own data. You need a separate set of data to test your theory. And you see, now the EIA is documenting the, the uh, Ackerman's Law and it agrees exactly with, with my data. Think of the old of my theory this way. You, you have a video of world history from prehistory until 2010. And then you stop the camera. And then you play the reel backwards. Hard to believe. But the Olduvai theory, as, as awful as it is, 
uh, remember that the Copernican theory was rejected for over 200 years before uh, the world could accept it. And uh, the Olivier theory does explain the Fermi paradox. The Fermi paradox said uh, that, um, okay, if they're out there, why haven't we detected them yet? The Olivier theory explains how immigration, illegal immigration, population, etc., will adjust to the, the local footprint worldwide. And um, uh, it will be 100% uh, uh, dependent upon uh, solar energy. Electric power, most people don't know that there's a tremendous amount of energy theft, electricity theft in the United States, billions and billions of dollars a year. You don't hear that. I can explain that to you later perhaps, but I couldn't find anything for, for Mexico, but for J Jamaica, could you lower it down so we can see the, here are the uh, power lines above and here are all the illegal connections. In Mexico, about 40% of the power is not paid for. And these are connections for the power line, you see these connections coming down like this? None of this electricity is paid for in Mexico. It, Mexico, Mexico is, I claim as an engineer, and measured by engineering factors, it's a failed country. The main, the mother of all grids in this world is electric power, not oil, not natural gas. That's it. That. I don't want to go into that, but without without electric power, there would be no oil, no natural gas. Here is the New York blackout of 2003. It actually extended from Canada all the way down to uh, Philadelphia. And Hans Thuring said this about electric power: If in any developed country, electric power is lost, three quarters of the population will die within a few days. Think about it. And he said that, Hans Thuring, colleague of uh, Erwin Schrodinger, and he said that, wrote that in 1956. It's true today as ever. And people think, oh, we've got to improve the grid in America, uh, the New York blackouts and the greater blackouts, and occasionally in, occasionally in uh, Los Angeles down here. The greatest threat to America is not a blackout in America, it's a blackout in Mexico City and the environs. There's 30 million people living right here. If that area would black out from electricity, we would have a tsunamis of, uh, of tens, twenties, 100,000 people a day coming north across the border.